Although the Bracero program helped the economy of the United States during its most desperate times, the Bracero program depicts both the conflict and compromise in American history because it illustrates the hardships of Mexican workers who entered the United States, portrays the lasting effects of the Bracero program on the current broken immigration system, and symbolizes a significant turning point in American history. The Bracero Program was a formal agreement between the United States and Mexico that would allow 4.6 millions of Mexicans to obtain temporary agricultural jobs with contracts from 1942 to 1964. Unfortunately, the Bracero Program is one more example of the forgotten immigrant voices that are rarely taught or discussed in American classrooms. Despite the program's short duration, Mexican labor has continued extensively. When the United States entered World War I, there was a labor shortage that would reoccur once again in the dawn of World War II. The labor shortage impacted agriculture, one of the biggest industries for America and its economy. In order to suffice the labor shortage that the United States experienced, Mexican workers were contracted in the 1920s before the creation of the Bracero program. During this time, Mexicans made up the largest percentage of agricultural jobs until the Great Depression hit. Mexicans were fired and were the last to receive jobs during those difficult times. The Bracero program was reintroduced when a shortage of labor arose in the United States once again. Mexican workers who signed a contract for the Bracero program were later acknowledged as Braceros, which means strong arms. Truthfully, this name captivated the work ethic of Mexicans on the fields. The Braceros that entered the United States were experienced agricultural laborers from La Comarca Lagunera, in Coahuila, and other crucial agricultural regions. Given the opportunity to work in the United States, many men left their families behind while promising them to return with a pocket full of money. Not only was the program an opportunity, but it became the future of millions of workers desperately searching for a source of income. The majority of Braceros took a train to cross the border. Juarez, Chihuahua, and El Paso, Texas became gathering points for Braceros. They were then redirected to California or remained in Texas to fulfill the agricultural jobs open for them. They were provided with a place to stay known as barracks. The barracks that they lived in were large buildings that housed about 200 men. They lacked privacy, bath facilities, and restrooms. Although Braceros were to be provided with the hard copy of the labor contract in Spanish, they were not, but would sign the contract to speed up the long process, without truly knowing the terms that were listed. Yo no supe ni, pues nomás que era un contrato, que lo firmé, pero yo no lo leí a ver que eran lo, las cláusulas que había o algo, yo no, 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 pues que venía uno de Atero Verde de allá, pues cual, lo que querían no es llegar a trabajar, they were submitted into inspection where they were fumigated. Since their arrival in the United States, they endured racism, such as being called wetbacks, which originated from the procedures Mexicans would take in order to arrive to the United States. People who were not able to legally obtain their permit to work in the United States resorted to illegal immigration. After the war ended, the program continued. Farmers still recruited Braceros through illegal immigration. In 1951, Congress approved the Mexican Farm Labor Program, which continued the Bracero Program up until 1964. The Immigration and Nationality Act of 1952 made it illegal to shelter illegal immigrants, but farmers were still not penalized. The Bracero Program illustrated a clear example of exploitation of a group of people. Braceros work long hours every day with little breaks, low wages, and faced challenges of assimilating into American culture. By the 1960s, the Bracero program gained national attention for the improvement of Mexicans' working and living conditions. Despite the belief that Mexican workers would support a cause to improve their working conditions, many refused to support a needed change out of fear of losing their jobs. However, Cesar Chavez, a civil rights activist who co-funded the National Farms Worker Association to better the pay and working conditions of farm workers, created a movement that would encompass all agricultural jobs. 
Despite the controversy that emerged from the presence of Chavez, his organized work brought national attention to the social issues that were concealed on the fields. The workers not involved to bring workers because of the war effort. Well, we ne never got rid of the program until 1964. The war ended and they continued bringing in as many as a half a million. Depressed the way, just kept the unions out. And what I'm saying is that this is, this is what they do and they're, they're very good at it. Looking back, the Bracero program can be considered a turning point in American history because it has defined stereotypes for a specific group of people and outlined the living and working conditions for agricultural jobs. This sort of pattern has become apparent at a convenience where workers are recruited, and once their work is no longer of use, they are quickly disposed of. The Bracero program is a model of temporary guest worker programs of today. Meanwhile, Mexicans quickly painted a visual image of the American dream, where opportunity, freedom, and happiness were highlighted. The program is still relevant today and resonates with political debates regarding Mexican immigration and its staggering population over the years. The relations that the United States established with Mexico since the creation of the Bracero program has paved the way for the existence of immigration. While the United States struggled with labor shortage, Mexicans who temporarily worked eased the absence of agricultural workers, yet they were blamed for stealing jobs which in reality no one else would take due to low wages. The same dilemma is still present today, even though the United States economy and Mexican workers have both equally benefited from fulfilling labor. The Bracero program that was implemented in 1942 is no different from the broken immigration system of today, and it certainly has become apparent. As Mark Twain stated, history does not repeat itself, but often rhymes.